The sermon for this evening is based on the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. Uh, the sermon is entitled, What Child Is This? Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I know when uh, Thanksgiving arrives, I know it's a time, I know it's not Thanksgiving, so, <laughs> but when it arrives, I know for me, uh, it's a time of food and family and of get-togethers and just a time of Thanksgiving, but also it signals a time where, at least for myself and for my family, uh, it's a signal for us that it's time to prepare the photo card for Christmas. <laughs> I know it's funny because we just did that the other week and we rushed them out in the mail just the other week. But I know at my house we have this photo card of, uh, of baby Elliot and I know he's not a baby anymore. But every time I look at this photo card of Elliot, I think it brings me back to a time when he was that little baby. And I would always ask myself, as I would look at him, you know, how will his life go? What will he face in life? What challenges and struggles will he see? What joys will he experience? I think for all of us who have children, uh, we look at our babies and we wonder how God will guide them in this lifelong journey in the faith. You know, maybe they will be the next president or maybe they will be the next school teacher. Maybe they will be the next Mike Trout. Probably not, right? <laughs> The Lord only knows. But yet in our gospel story in Luke chapter 2, as the shepherds were watching over the flock by night in the thick of darkness, no street lights from the 118 or the 23 were nearby, but these shepherds were tending faithfully to their flock in their vocations. And there the angel of the Lord proclaimed to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy. This joy will be for all the people, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Jesus Christ, the Lord. You know, there is no photo card of wondering what this Jesus would do. There are no question marks on who this Jesus will be in this life, as the angel of the Lord had already told them. There is no maybe or maybe not, but rather there with the heavenly hosts praising God, they were saying, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. The shepherds were fascinated by these very words, because these words pointed to the Savior, this babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, that this word would be of certainty, this word would be of truth, of deliverance, of peace, and of true freedom, all wrapped in this baby Jesus. The Word made flesh. Normally, any parent would have their baby in their arms, wondering all these questions. But there Mary was, seeing these shepherds, as they were proclaiming what they had seen and heard from the angel of the Lord. There she was pondering in her heart, treasuring these very words, knowing that in her arms <laughs> was the one who was going to do the greatest thing. What child is this? Today we celebrate on the eve of Christmas the birth of the child. The child of God conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, the Christ comes to us. Begotten of the Father, sent to be the Savior. 
What child is this? The child is your Savior. I guess the question for ourselves is, why do I need a Savior? Why do you need a Savior? Why do I have to be saved? And why do you need to be saved? Simply put, because we cannot save ourselves. I know many people will try to think or tell themselves that they can. Many try to give rest to their consciences, telling themselves, yes, I'm a good person, I've done good in my life. I'm sure that goodness will give me the right standing with God. But the truth is, as we know in the Bible, beginning in the Garden of Eden, there our first parents fell to sin. And thus we, as the Bible states, we have all sinned and fallen short to the glory of God. Or as scripture reads, for as by one man's disobedience, all were made to be sinners. I think the scripture humbles us quickly, that even in the midst of every struggle, every affliction, every sickness and fragility, every worry, every guilt, every shame, all of it is rooted in the need of Jesus because we live in this condition of sin. Sin isn't something we can push away ourselves. Sin isn't something that we can cover by our morality. Sin isn't something that we can just sweep under the rug hoping that it will somehow go away. But in the midst of the veil of this sin that we have, the question is on this night, what child is this? That is the utmost, most important question we have this day. What child is this? Is the baby Jesus one who only will grow up to be our example? Will baby Jesus grow up to be our most righteous life coach? Will baby Jesus grow up to be a good man? Well, a good man to follow. Is that what this day is all about? What child is this? Is he just another babe born in Bethlehem. You know, when Jesus was born, there was no pomp and circumstance. He grew up <coughs> like a young plant, like a root out of dry ground, as Isaiah says. He, he has no form or majesty or, or beauty in himself that anyone should look at him. Even this day in this world, as many people celebrate Christmas, there too, Jesus is not seen with any beauty, nor worth, nor significance. Just another birthday as the world turns the page. But for us Christians, like Mary, it's a time to treasure and ponder those very words. The most important question this day, what child is this? What will be of this baby Jesus' life? How will his life go? What things will Jesus face? What challenges and struggles will he see? What joys will he experience? What accolades will he accomplish? Seemingly normal like any other child you will name him Jesus, for he will save people from their sins. This child is God. This Jesus is for you, the word made flesh, coming to us, saving us and rescuing us from sin and every sorrow. Saving us from our sin to overcome eternal death for every one of us to be the salvation that ultimately crushes the evil tempter himself, the devil. What child is this? This is the Christ, 
the anointed one, the one set apart to fulfill the very mission that no one else could ever accomplish in their lives. Not you, not me, not even the most righteous person can do such things. But this child, Jesus, he knew one purpose. And the purpose of his life, the purpose of his growing up faithful without sin. His purpose is to die for you on the cross. Everyone has a purpose. But this child Jesus comes into the world to stand in your place to fulfill salvation for you because of his love, his mercy, his compassion and grace. He comes to you delivering you by the nails of the cross, the piercing, paying the punishment for your sins. This is this child for you, Jesus. This isn't just like any birthday with candles and party hats and gifts, and the great occasion of celebrating life. But the birth of Christ is a day that gives life to the world. This is a day, a reminder that it is Jesus who gives to you the gift of salvation. This is this child, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. The only Jesus, the only Christ, defeating death and the devil for you, overcoming evil and bringing salvation and forgiveness to you and to all the world. Yes, our Lord would only grow up to enter in. But by his will, by his love for you, he enters into that cross. This is the child that has come into the world. To bear the wrath for you. This is the child who comes into the world to rise three days later to give you victory over death to give you comfort, to give you peace. But by his work, you were bought and paid with a price. And by his merits, you are indeed saved. I know I love Mike Trout, as you know. (laughs) But yes, Mike Trout does a lot of Mike Trout things, doesn't he? He hits home runs, he hits for the cycle, he scales the wall and robs too many people of home runs. He's pretty much the greatest baseball ever player to ever live. That was his calling for him. But Jesus Christ, he does Jesus Christ things. He turns the world upside down all by his gracious work. Jesus Christ does Jesus Christ things as he is your sacrifice for you, as he washes away your sin, as he overcomes death for you. What other child would grow up to do such things? Only Christ. It will always be only Christ. There is no other way. There is no maybe or maybe not in this picture. There's no wonder or ifs in this picture. There is no, I wonder if this happens or I hope it will happen. No, it does happen because this is the child that we celebrate this day. Jesus, the one who is your assurance from sin, death, and the power of the devil, the one who is your peace as he accomplished the work of salvation for you, the one who answers all the question marks in your life and gives you rest in the midst of all the grief and struggle that you may be facing right now, and even in the midst of sin, giving you those words that you are forgiven. This is the child. And thus we go in great rejoice, knowing that our Savior is Jesus, the name above all names. 
the one who will save you from your sin. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thanks for listening to the Christmas Eve sermon from Faith Lutheran Church in Moore Park, California. For more information, visit us on the web at faithmoorpark.com.